My name's Abby. I'm a science journalist and author of The Art of Urban Astronomy. I'm here to tell you why stargazing from home is a great hobby to do at the moment and to talk you through a few cool things you can see in the night sky to get you started. This year, people around the world have stayed at home to protect themselves and others from coronavirus. I live in the Northern Hemisphere and it's the middle of November now. The nights are starting to get really dark really early and that can be really difficult for some people. It can be horrible when it's the sun sets before 5 p.m. and you've not even finished work. Then after work you feel like you, you, there's nothing to do. But the one good thing about the nights getting dark early is the opportunity for stargazing. any expensive equipment to start stargazing at home, all you need is your eyes. But I do tell people if they want to have a good idea of what they're looking at, then downloading a free stargazing app can be a really great way to start. There's so many of them available and they're really easy to use. All you have to do is point your phone in the direction you're looking and it will tell you exactly what you're seeing, whether that's a star, a planet, or even a satellite. talk about the planets. I love looking for the planets and I think they can be a really great way to start stargazing. They're really fun to look for and some of them are so bright you can see them from pretty much anywhere, even the most light polluted cities. At the moment there are quite a few different planets you can see depending on what time you want to look. If you're an early riser and you want to look two to one hour before sunrise, then if you look in the east you'll be able to see Venus rising and followed by Mercury. Venus is much brighter and easier to spot. Mercury is smaller and further away, so it can be harder to see, especially in areas of light pollution. If you don't want to get up early, fair enough, then you can look for other planets. So at the moment, Jupiter and Saturn are setting just after sunset. So you probably have about an hour or an hour and a half in which to see them after the sun sets. They'll be in the west and Jupiter is much brighter. Saturn is less bright, but still very visible. And it will be just above to the left of Jupiter. Those two planets are actually getting closer together. So if you want to watch them, you, if you see them, you could even look at them just maybe once a week and um, you'll actually notice them getting closer and closer together until the end of December they're going to be in what's called a great conjunction which means that they're actually going to be in the same place in the sky and that's going to be a really cool thing to look for. Once you find a few planets you're probably going to want to look for some constellations. In the northern hemisphere there are a few constellations that are really easy to find. The first of these is Orion. Orion is a winter constellation and at the moment it's rising at around 9 o'clock and then after that it's visible for the whole night. The way to spot Orion is by looking for the three stars in a row of Orion's belt. These are really easy to find and they are really distinctive. Once you find the belt, look up and to the left and you'll see a bright star that looks quite red. That's Betelgeuse. And below to the right, there's also a blue bright star. That's actually the brightest star in the constellation and that's called Rigel. From those two, you'll be able to spot the whole pattern of the constellation of Orion the Hunter. Another constellation that's really easy to see in the Northern Hemisphere is Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is quite a small constellation, but it makes up a really distinctive W or M shape in the sky. It's always near the North Star, so if you look in the direction north, you won't be far away. Once you find Cassiopeia, it can, be it can be really fun to use it to star hop to other constellations or other things in the sky. One thing I love doing for using Cassiopeia is looking for the Andromeda galaxy. So every other star you see in the night sky is part of our galaxy, the Milky Way. But you can actually see the Andromeda galaxy with the naked eye. It's the most distant thing you can see without using binoculars or a telescope. And it's 2.5 million light years away. In order to find the Andromeda galaxy, you do need quite a dark sky, so it needs to be quite, you need to be away from light pollution, you probably won't be able to see it in the middle of a city. But if you do find yourself somewhere dark and you want to have a look for it, it's really easy to see. All you need to do is look for the deep V in Cassiopeia. So if you are looking at it like a W, it'll be the one on the right, and if it's an M, it's the one on the left. Now that V acts like an arrow pointing you towards the Andromeda galaxy. 
all you have to do is follow that direction and you'll be able to see a fuzzy spot in the sky about the size of the full moon. That is the Andromeda Galaxy. There are loads of other really cool things you can see in the night sky. If you're stargazing for about an hour, you'll probably see a couple of meteors, even if it's not a meteor shower. Also, you'll probably see quite a few satellites going across the sky. The, bit, the way to tell the difference between the two is the meteor will be much brighter and will move much quick, more quickly and it will fizzle out really fast. A satellite will look like a solid white light moving gradually across the sky. Sometimes they take a minute, sometimes two minutes to cross the entire sky in front of you. And if you see a flashing light moving, that's probably a plane. Um, if you want to look for the International Space Station, then there is all, there are updates on NASA's website. There is a website called Spot the Station, and you can sign up for alerts to when the space station will be visible in your area. I hope that's been helpful. I hope it's inspired you to get outside and have a look at some stars or some planets, or even just look for a planet from the comfort of your own home. Let's start making the most of those dark nights.